This is the first time that I actually have no idea what I'm gonna say in this video. I was just like, I'm gonna make a video about a show I watched and talk. So the show I want to talk about is a show called You. You can find it on Netflix if you're curious. And before I say anything about the show, I just want to say that I'm not saying you shouldn't watch the show. I'm not saying you should watch the show. I'm saying I thoroughly enjoyed the show, but I also find it very problematic. And here's the thing, okay, I'm talking about you specifically right now, but it's not actually the only show that I've seen do this before. I've definitely seen it done in a lot of movies, including very famous movies and movies that I also actually enjoyed. And uh, once I tell you what movie this is, you're gonna be like, what? I'm talking about Twilight. Bruh. Not proud of it. But I used to be a big fan. Team Jacob, by the way. Okay, so I don't even really know where to start because like I said, I didn't script this uh, video at all. I've got no idea what I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna give you my honest opinion. I'm gonna try my best not to put spoilers in, but it's gonna be really difficult to say what I wanna say without spoiling it. So I'll try my best not to, <laughs> but I apologize, so. Well, first of all, just to give you an idea that the show is quite riveting, shall I call it? Because I started watching it on like a Saturday morning really early and I pretty much binge watched the whole show and finished the season by the end of Saturday. The same Saturday, by the way. And here's the thing. It's a very good show, it's very well produced. The actors are amazing at it. The characters are very well um, developed. But this show is, <laughs> oh, so problematic. If you don't know what the show is about, it's basically about this character named Joe, played by Penn Badgley from Gossip Girl. And I think one of the mistakes that they made was they took actually a very attractive guy to play this role. That, I think, was one of the problems, but uh, there's a few more. The thing is with this, okay, is they've got this guy, Joe. He works at a bookstore and then he meets this beautiful blonde girl whose name is Beck? I think it's Guinevere, but she likes to be called Beck. Water break. Two thousand years later. She likes to be called Beck because for some reason that makes her all special and stuff, I don't know. Personally, you'll see throughout this video that I'm actually not a big fan of her character, but uh, anyway. She's beautiful, she's funny, she's smart, she's witty, whatever. He falls madly in love. And when I say madly in love, I do mean madly. I'm putting emphasis on the madly here because he kind of starts obsessing over her and quite frankly, stalking her. So first he follows on so or like stalks her on social media and finds out pretty much everything about her, including where she lives. And then he actually goes to her place and physically keeps an eye on her. And for some reason, this girl hasn't invested in curtains, which I find very strange considering her window is like, looks over the streets. It's not even like high up in the buildings so it's difficult for people to see her. Her window's right, like, looks right onto the street. And then she does things like get undressed in front of it and, like, has sexy time with her boyfriend, I guess you could say. Not Joe. This is other guy called Benji. First of all, that, that I found really strange because I'm like, girl, please, put some curtains on. You're not that poor. Moving on, he starts obsessing over, freaking out about her. And then from this show is basically just where you get to see his side of the story, like how he experiences everything and what he thinks, which I found particularly interesting because as someone who really enjoys watching like crime documentaries, not like CSI, I mean like legit, like crime investigation, discovery ID, you know, those type of things. And I'm very intrigued in like the psychology of people who or two sandwiches short of a picnic. So I found it very interesting because you get to see from his side. Like he doesn't think he's being weird or strange or creepy. He just thinks he cares about her like a lot and he's trying to protect her. It's weird, I know, but anywho. I found it really interesting because I was like very intrigued into his like mind process, but it also makes the story problematic. They show another side to him as well where he's got this kid who I for the life of me can't remember the name. 
But he's got this kid, a neighbor kid, who also lives in very messed up circumstances with his mom and the guy that she's dating is very abusive and he's a drunk and he's got these horrible circumstances. And then Joe's just a really nice guy about it and he takes care of the kid and he helps the kid where he can. And he's just a good role model for the kid. What I kind of liked about that is the fact that they show that people aren't just monsters. Like I, I'm a firm, firm believer that most people aren't inherently inherently horrible even the worst kind of people weren't born horrible yeah you know you feel me so there's the, like always more to a person and that that i kind of enjoyed that i thought was like okay like I'll, I'll give it to you but what i didn't enjoy was the fact that they really have this way where like a few episodes in i found myself rooting for joe which was a very strange moral dilemma to find myself in because I like to think that I, I'm a good person. But here I was rooting for someone who is very messed up. And I don't mean because he's like mentally unstable. I mean like this guy did some really messed up stuff. Spoiler alert, like skip a few seconds if you don't want to see what he did. But he basically, he killed people. In his mind he thought he was doing Beck a favor, but whatever. The point is, he's like a really dangerous person, really not someone you want in your life, and someone who, quite frankly, should be behind bars. But I found myself rooting for him, and it was weird. It made me very uncomfortable. You know that feeling you get on a roller coaster where you're like, nod, but you don't want to throw it up? It's just nod, nauseous. Sorry, I'm throwing off a concert. That's exactly how I felt. I don't want to be rooting for the bad guy. They made the bad guy good, and that's what makes makes it problematic. Because now you've got girls watching the show, fantasizing about this guy, and I'm, I'm not making this up. Like, people started tweeting at Penn, saying stuff like, kidnap me, and talking about how sexy he is, and how he's like, next level hot, and stuff like that. And I'm very disturbing. I mean, this guy's a freak. This guy's a murderer. Why are you fantasizing about him? And what made it even more problematic is that the main character, the female lead, Beck, she's very difficult to like. Like, I had a really tough time liking her. I tried. I tried so much. Like, I kept giving her the benefit of the doubt. And I was like, girl, I'm gonna try. Like, I'm gonna try this time around. Like, I'm gonna see if I got you. But I never got her. I legit never understood her. There are loads of reasons, I guess you could say. I feel like she played with him, she played him a little bit, which I didn't like. She definitely messed with his feelings as well, which I thought was just really not right. I mean, like, yes, okay, he's killing people, but I mean, she didn't know that at that point when she treated him that horribly. She just thought he was a nice guy and she treated him horribly anyway. And he actually reached a point where he was like falling in love with another girl who, again, for the life of me, I can't remember her name. And he was kind of happy with her and he was actually being healthy, like he was being healthy about it. And then she had to come back because he wasn't giving her the attention that she wanted and she didn't want him to be happy without her. So she kind of wormed herself in there and he ended up cheating up the cheating on the goal and then leaving her for Beck again. So I mean like, you're making really horrible decisions and you're being kind of a bad person. So I'm like, and again, I have a tough time liking anyone who lives like with a window right across the street, gets undressed in front of it, never bothers to put on a freaking curtain. She also seems like she really is like yearning just for attention. Like she just seems like she loves attention and she's always craving for it. I ain't about that life, okay? What I'm trying to say is what makes the show really problematic in my opinion is the fact that you've got a character like Joe who in real life, like if these were real people, not fictional characters, like if this was real life, Joe would actually be the bad guy. You'd think he was evil, you'd call him disgusting and sick and so many names. Like if you read the story on the news, you'd be like, oh, this evil monster. And then you've got the girl Beck who in real life, you would have been like, oh, she's poor girl she's a victim and you'd feel sorry for her but now in the show it's exactly the opposite i found myself even till the very last episode feeling sorry for joe and being like Ugh, over Beck. so what makes the show problematic is that they're romanticizing bad men and dangerous men and toxic relationships which brings me to movies for example like 50 shades of gray i will make a whole video where i rant and rave about how horrible that movie is and how i don't understand why it's such a thing i don't get it but anyway but even to an extent twilight it's these movies romanticize very toxic relationships i mean in twilight let's be real this guy was like he was like really old and she was a young teenager it was just a really weird toxic relationship between her and edward he was very 
very controlling, he was very obsessive, and he was also creepy. I mean, he just showed up at a house for crying out loud. That's weird. If that happened in real life, you'd be like, oh, boy, bye. For some reason in, in movies, it's like, so romantic. It's not healthy. And then you've got Fifty Shades of Grey, where, you, Grey, where you've also got this guy who's like very controlling, very obsessive, very weird, very creepy, very stalky. Stalkery. Stalkish. I don't know what... Stalkerish. I guess that's the right English. But anyway, you've got these bad men, and I mean bad in the sense that they're not only dangerous, they're also bad for you and they're very toxic for you. You've got them playing the lead characters, played by these really hot guys. So women start fantasizing about these type of relationships. And that, my friend, is where it gets really dangerous because women already have this thing where for some reason we just want to fix people. We just really badly want to fix men. Like if men were dogs in a shelter, women have the tendency to go for the one who lost his leg and his eye. Women love going for broken men and they end up getting just hurt in the process because the man never changes. But Anyway, that's again a topic for another video. Women always tend to go for these broken men already and now you're romanticizing and fantasizing the idea and you're not making it better. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying these type of movies and shows, as good as they can be, except for Fifty Shades of Grey. That was a horrible movie, the acting was bad, the writing was bad and except for Jamie Dornan, the rest was pretty much mm -mm. But anyway, yes, You is a great show. It's, it's very riveting, like I said, but it's problematic because it fantasizes really bad and toxic relationships and makes you feel like <sighs> towards the killer. Am I saying don't watch the show? No, I'm not saying watch, don't watch the show. If you wanna watch the show, watch the show. I'm just saying, I'm just giving my opinion about why I think it's problematic. But anyway, yes, this was a bit of a different type of video, but I just felt like ranting and raving a little bit and uh, it's always nice. So, if you did enjoy my video, please, please remember to give me some TLC comment, like, and subscribe. But seriously, please subscribe. Like, I need subscribers. Subscribe. And then, because this isn't a video that I actually planned, I'm not going to do a shout out today, but I will do a shout out again next time. Until next time, stay awesome. Ciao.